Exclusive. Oh, God, I forgot my line. Hilarious bloopers on the set of No Hard Feelings. <laughs> Make sure you check that out. We have one more thing to show. Happening now. Shopping online through Facebook Market or Craigslist, a police chief tells us the best safety tip so you don't become a victim of a crime. It didn't take long for a jury to come down with the 75-year sentence for a man convicted of murder coming up reaction from family as they face him in a courtroom. More record-challenging triple-digit heat will be the theme this weekend, along with elevated fire danger conditions. But could we see a small pattern change early next week? We'll get to those details in a few. The News at 5 starts right now. They were supposed to be simple transactions, but on Tuesday night, two online sales exchanges ended in gunfire. Now one man is dead, another teenager is in the hospital after meeting up to sell things that they found online. Our Camelia Juarez spoke to the Kirby police chief about some red flags to keep an eye on the next time you're making an exchange after an online purchase. Two teens were shot and killed Tuesday night trying to sell a black Dodge Charger off 281 in Southern Bear County. The same night, another teenager was shot and sent to the hospital after meeting at a restaurant at FM 78 in Walsham Road to sell a necklace. Suspect in the case actually told the victims uh, to drive around to the back of the restaurant uh, to another location because it was too crowded there to conduct the transaction. Should have been a red flag for these for these victims in this case. Kirby Police Chief Roxanne Cardona has a warning for other people trying to make a deal online. Do it during the day and don't go alone. So there is such thing as a safe zone, right? And a lot of agencies, it's a re free resources, and a lot of agen agencies put up signs like this where it says it's a meetup spot and internet purchase exchange location. Chief Cardona suggests that if you're going to meet up for those online transactions, the best place is here, a police department parking lot. You want to feel comfortable in what you're doing and most importantly, be safe. We want to keep you safe. That to me is the safest place to be. When it comes to bringing a weapon to your meetup, Cardona says to be responsible. Person, you have to be in self-defense, fearing for your life to utilize a weapon. Mm -hmm. If you use it wrong, then you might go to jail. Camelia Juarez, Kisa 12 News. SAPD says a man opens his front door and yells at two men breaking into a car. One of the men responds by shooting him. It happened just before 4 a.m. this morning on Sugar Pine Drive. It's not far from Bitters Road and Partridge Trail. San Antonio police say the 36 year old victim shot once in his side. We're told his injury is non life threatening. The suspects took off. Police are still searching for them at this hour. This is the second shooting in two days where a vehicle burglary escalated into a shooting. Officers say yesterday morning a car owner shot and wounded a suspected car burglar at an apartment complex near Loop 1604 and O'Connor Road. The car owner told police during the confrontation that suspect also threatened him and his girlfriend with a gun. Police are still investigating that incident as well. An elderly woman in Poteet died in a fire last night. According to the Poteet Police Department's Facebook page, it happened at a home on the corner of Avenue F and 5th Street. While firefighters were battling that fire when they got to the scene, they found the 70-year-old woman inside of the home. Right now, we don't know her name, but uh, the Atascosa County Fire Marshal's Office is investigating that. Now, new at five relief for a San Antonio family today as the man accused of killing Tiffany Washington back in 2020 was sentenced to 75 years in prison. Our Erica Hernandez has more on the James Stewart trial. We the jury assess confinement at the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for a period of 75 years. A cry of relief from the family of Tiffany Washington as James Stewart was sentenced to 75 years in prison for the April 2020 murder of his girlfriend. The couple were arguing over cell phones when Washington grabbed a knife and Stewart grabbed a shotgun. As the argument intensified, Stewart had previously told police the gun accidentally went off. 
During testimony in the punishment phase, Stewart took the stand, and while he took responsibility, he showed very little remorse. For the record, I take full responsibility for my actions. And after that verdict came down, then it was emotional reaction from the family as they faced Stewart for one last time. I will miss my daughter deeply. Why did you have to do this to her? What made you feel sorry for me? Do you have to happen? I know justice will not bring my sister back, but it will definitely pull a gap of despair and lift a heavy burden. Stewart will now be sent to a Texas prison. He won't be eligible for parole until he is almost 88 years old. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. The Crime Stoppers offering a reward of up to $5,000 to get a gunman off the street. Do you know who this guy is? San Antonio police on July 6th say this suspect walked up to a man and shot him, then ran away. Happened outside a convenience store in the 6,000 block of Old Pearsall Road near Five Palms Drive on the southwest side. If you know who this suspect is, call Crime Stoppers. Now, staying with Crime Stoppers, they also need help finding those two suspects that you see on your screen. In this case, they're wanted for allegedly shooting several people, including an elderly man with a BB gun. Investigators say that the elderly victim was pumping gas at the Circle K on Hebner Road on July 31st, and that's when they say that a newer Dodge Charger pulled up, so when inside, demanded that he give over his credit card. The victim refused, so police say that's when the suspects shot him and then drove off. And here's the thing. Police think the suspects also shot joggers in the same area and tried to take money and gas from them. If you recognize them, if you know where they are, call Crime Stoppers. The number's on your screen. It's 210-224-7867. Federal agents investigating a house fire in a rural area of Metro Washington, D.C. today. Firefighters responding to the scene in Harwood, Maryland to find the flames consuming the home. No fire hydrants nearby, so crews had to drain water from a pool to fight the flames. No one at the home. Initially, there had been reports of explosions that prompted the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives to also respond to this fire. It's believed the explosion sound may have come from a propane tank and oxygen tank. Two General Motors employees arrested for allegedly stealing multiple cars from the assembly plant parking lot in Lansing, Michigan. Police there say the two Chevy Camaros and two Cadillacs stolen from one of the parking lots early yesterday morning. They say a 15-year-old in one of the Camaros and two men in one of the Cadillacs stopped at a gas station. That's where police caught them. One of the men in the Cadillac's Cadillac ran from officers. He's reportedly still on the run. Those vehicles recovered. General Motors says it is working with local law enforcement. They're reviewing their procedures to tighten security even further. Now, unfortunately, things in Hawaii are not getting better. The wildfires on Maui continue to burn. We know that at least 55 people have been killed, and officials are worried that that number is going to keep going up. Yes, yeah, so much devastation. As ABC's Melissa Don reports, the Lahaina fires in Maui now 80% contained, but not before much of that historic town was destroyed. Authorities calling it the greatest emergency they've seen in decades. Entire neighborhoods on the island of Maui decimated, including the historic town of Lahaina, once the capital of the Kingdom of Hawaii. It, it just breaks my heart that all the history from back in the whaling days of the 1800s, dust, ash and dust. The tropical paradise known for its lush landscape and picturesque beaches now unrecognizable in some areas. Officials say as many as a thousand people are unaccounted for, though they stress that spotty communication is preventing many from contacting their loved ones and expect that number to decrease in the coming days. As flames rage through the town, thousands evacuating, some even jumping into the ocean to escape the flames, like Sean Doherty. And I couldn't even make it across the street because the pavement was so hot and now I have second degree burns on the bottom of the feet. Another fire simultaneously ravaged the Kula neighborhood in Maui's upcountry. But amid the tragedy, a silver lining as this couple sifted through the rubble of their home, searching for their wedding rings. You found it? At least one. We're still looking oh, for the other one. Not much, it but it's something. The small things, right? Meanwhile, at the airport, tourists desperate to get home, thanking the locals who helped them reach safety. He said one of them said there's nothing else they can do. They've lost their home. They can't get to their home. They know that their family's safe. So I might as well be here to help. 
As for those returning home, Hawaii's governor going on local television sharing that residents from Lahaina can now return to visit their property, see what's left of it. Several locals that we met with already on their way. Melissa Adan, ABC News, Maui. Wow, now back here at home, the devastation there in Maui is prompting local efforts to help, especially from those families from Hawaii who now live right here in the Alamo City. The Park family, for example, owns and operates Aloha Kitchen Catering and Entertainment. Now, they just got back from visiting relatives in Hawaii two weeks ago. So they're putting a, on a donation drive to help their family back home. They're accepting any financial, any clothing donations, and they're going to be collecting them tomorrow at Aloha Kitchen on Harry Wurzbach Road near the golf course at Form San Fort Sam Houston. Happening right now, Texas tax-free weekend underway just in time as more students are heading back to the classrooms next week. Shoppers have the chance to save on school supplies, most clothes, shoes, backpacks that are under the $100 price tag. Now keep in mind, not everything tax-free, things like jewelry and purses do not qualify. You have a link to the full list of all eligible items right now on KSAT.com. Now I have a question for you. Do you have your tickets yet to this year's 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic? Don't wait, because this is one of high school football's biggest events. And guess what? It got even bigger. An extra game was added to the last day of the two-day event. Things are going to kick off Friday, August 25th with one game and then jumps to three games on Saturday, August 26th. And as I mentioned, you can get tickets right now. Get the VIP experience when you become a KSAT insider. Just scan that QR code on your screen for more information or head on over to KSAT.com. Check out traffic on this Friday. I think we're going to go to Ford Center McCullough. Why not? Because this is one of the busiest areas traditionally. You can see the ramps both from and to 281 there as well. And traffic is heavy, but the good news is it's at least moving. A lot of folks getting off of work and ready to step out for those Friday night plans. It is still going to be plenty hot over the next several hours. Once again, the vast majority of South Central Texas climbing into the triple digits this Friday afternoon. 106 in Del Rio, same just off to the south in Eagle Pass, a little bit closer to San Antonio. 106 in New Braunfels, 107 in Lavernia, and 101 in Bernie. If you are stepping out for any of those evening plans, temperatures are slowly going to fall through the low 100s. Eventually into the 90s, 96 by 9 p.m. under clear skies and much like what we've seen over the past several evenings, it is going to be breezy with some wind gusts out of the south upwards of about 25 miles per hour. That's going to continue in some way, shape or form this weekend, which means that fire danger is still going to be elevated and you can see that record challenging heat is still in the forecast. Daytime highs around 105. Those temperatures are going to continue next week, but could we see a small pattern? Pattern change that may introduce a stray shower by Tuesday. We'll get you all those details in just a few. Mia, thank you. Now coming up, seafood is delicious, but it can be tricky and also leave you in a bad way if it's not fresh. Knowing how to fish out the good from the bad and how to avoid getting a raw deal whenever you buy seafood. It's up next. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. The city of San Antonio wants to do hundreds more homeless camp cleanups next year. It says there are resources on the other side of this, but not everyone is convinced this is a good idea. We'll explain. Plus, from humanitarian concerns along the Rio Grande to environmental ones, how could those giant buoys placed in the water affect the river and its ecosystem? We talked to someone who's working to answer that very question. And three Spurs icons will be inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame this weekend. We talked to fans who share their best memories of Coach Pop, Tony Parker, and Becky Hammond. That and more today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. Seafood, a lot of people love it. It's good for your heart, but seafood can spoil quickly. That won't make you feel so good. No, getting seafood sick is something else. Yeah, so 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us what to look for when you're buying fresh fish and also how to handle it once you get it home. Finding truly fresh seafood can be a challenge, but Chris Perkins, a supplier who delivers dock to door, knows how to do it. 
We also deal with suppliers in Hawaii, Alaska, Canada, the East Coast, and those products are shipped. Logistics nowadays is amazing. Seafood is more perishable than meat or poultry, so you need to be careful. Cooking seafood to 145 degrees Fahrenheit kills most germs that could be in the food. But when the food is eaten raw, especially when it wasn't previously frozen, pathogens can be present and make you sick. For fin fish, the issue is mostly parasites that can work their way into a person's intestinal wall and cause nausea, diarrhea, or a stomach ache. So how do you examine the catch of the day? You always want to look at the eyes, make sure they're not overly cloudy. Look at the gills. Make sure they're flesh-like. Look like they still have blood in them. Not gray or dark, which that guy's beautiful. The American Heart Association recommends eating at least two servings of non-fried fish a week. For raw shellfish, check for freshness. Bagged shellfish should have a tag indicating when it was harvested. If it isn't bagged, ask the supplier. Stick with those harvested no more than about a week earlier. And when you're shopping... Having a, a freezer bag with you, uh, either gel packs or ice in a Ziploc works as well. And that's how you transport your, your product from the store. Place it in the coldest part of your fridge. But if you won't use raw seafood within a day or two, freeze it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All good advice. Also, grilled seafood is delicious, although I can't imagine wanting to spend a lot of time outside. <laughs> Seriously. At least not during this time. I mean, right now it's 516, 105 degrees. Yep. It's not great. It's not great. And you know what's not great also is that this trend is just going to continue this weekend and even into next week. This heat high pressure still the main driver of our weather pattern over the next several days. So right now our official high is 105, but we'll see when we get the next climo update just before the top of the 6 p.m. hour if we haven't climbed yet maybe one more degree. We'll give you that update a little bit later on the news at 6. But yes, it has been another triple digit day here in San Antonio. Today marks the 46th 100 degree plus day that we have seen so far this year. Still in the fourth top spot for the most number of triple digit days we've seen in a given year. But of course, we are just going to tack on to that in the days ahead, all starting with tomorrow. Another forecast high around 105. By the way, if that verifies, that will break tomorrow's record of 104 that was set back in the 1960s. And pretty much each and every day, even into the beginning of next week, we will have the opportunity to come close to to tie or break more existing record highs. And that all starts, yes, with our Saturday. So tomorrow morning, I think we'll see some more clouds work back in just because the humidity builds through the overnight hours. We're also going to start on the warm side, a morning forecast low of about 80 degrees. 89 by 11 a.m. We'll see plenty of sunshine take back over by lunchtime, 93 for any lunchtime plans. And then later on into the afternoon, plenty of blue sky with that forecast high around 105, 106 in Pleasanton, 105 in Gonzales, 109 potentially in Catula and 106 out west in Del Rio. By the way, also like what we've seen over the past few days, it will likely be breezy with some wind gusts upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. All right, so here's a look at the big picture. Here's our heat high pressure. So the main driver of our weather pattern right now, there's a little disturbance pushing across the Great Lakes region, even some severe weather possible across the upper Midwest and then to our neighbors well off to the east in the deep south. Nothing like that expected for us here in San Antonio. But watch what happens in the upper levels here over the next several days. This high pressure system, it's going to wobble around a little bit. Eventually, though, it's going to move a little bit farther west by Monday and Tuesday, center itself over the Four Corners region. And as it does so, it might leave just enough space for a weak, and I do mean weak front, to move into central Texas, stall just off to our north, but maybe that could spark up a very stray shower specifically on Tuesday. Still bet on the vast majority of, majority of us staying dry, only have a 10% chance in the forecast right now, but at least it is something that we will continue to monitor for. Until then, yes, because it is so incredibly dry out there, fire danger is still going to be elevated this evening. That continues tomorrow and really over the next several days, likely until we get some decent rain chances back in the forecast. So here are some good fire safety reminders just to keep in mind as you do head into any of those weekend plans. No campfires or burn piles. Avoid using tools that could create sparks, specifically well 
welding and maybe refrain from driving recently driven cars, at least parking them over those dry grasses and vegetation. So we'll continue to monitor all of that in the days ahead. But of course, the big story is still going to be that record challenging heat all the way through next week. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. All right. So I have an idea. OK, the Spurs are silver and black. Uh huh. Tony Parker is number nine. Uh huh. Larry Ramirez joins us now from a casino. So, Larry, what I'm saying is go to the roulette wheel, black number nine. Put a bet down for me. Spree, sir, say no more. <laughs> I will do it. I'm going to tell you what, all the, all the machines behind me, They've been calling my name. I'm I telling bet. you right now, I'm going to have to go there. <laughs> All right, you know, so we are here at the Mohegan Sun. It's a cool spot. We're watching NBA players walk back and forth inside the lobby here because they're all here for the Hall of Fame induction tomorrow. Coming up, Tony Parker is going to be inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame and as the first French player. Plus, in the NFL, the Houston Texans won their preseason opener, but C.J. Stroud struggled. Coming up. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to the Mohegan Sun here in Connecticut where the Basketball Hall of Fame class for 2023 got together for a Hall of Fame presser earlier this afternoon, and it was impressive. But WNBA legend Becky Hammond is not here, though, because her Las Vegas Aces, they have a game tonight. Becky is certainly team first. Now, we're told she'll be here for the ceremony tomorrow. The Hall of Fame presser started at 2 p.m. local time, and Tony Parker was the first one to take the stage. And he was asked about going into the Hall Hall of Fame and as the first French player to get his call to the hall. It feels uh, surreal, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, I never thought somebody like me can experience uh, something like that. And uh, it's been unbelievable the last uh, two weeks uh, working on my speech and being nostalgic and finally realizing everything that we accomplished uh, with the Spurs. Um, it's been very special. And to share that with my family, with my friends, uh, I have a lot of French people in town. I apologize. There's going to be a big French mafia tonight <laughs> and tomorrow. Now, earlier today, we got to go one-on-one -on -one with Spurs legend and Hall of Famer Manu Ginobili. Always great to catch up with him. You will hear from Manu tonight at 6. For now, let's send it back to San Antonio where Mary has more. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Can't wait to hear that conversation. Well, last night, the Houston Texans earned the win in their first preseason game. QB CJ Stroud, though, played in just two series. His drives ended in an interception and a punt in the 20-9 win. It was good to see him when the play broke down, see him operate outside of the play It was as it was designed to see him move. That was good. And it was also good to see him make, you know, uh, a poor decision with the football and he was he had to pay right for making that poor decision but it was good to see him learn from that defensively the texans impressed and held the patriots to three of 12 on third down we'll be right back all right, we will keep powering through this stretch of triple digit days, pretty much copy and paste through the week ahead, except for Tuesday, where we'll monitor for that very stray shower with that small pattern change. Yeah, we all have our fingers crossed for Tuesday. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for watching the news at five. World News Up next, see you back here at six.